2020, I, um, I processed that I needed to assist more in the world. And so I had never done what I've done. Um, I started a nonprofit to assist men with mental health and homelessness. Um, thank you. And then in, in 2022, something happened where I got very discouraged based on my experiences in the streets assisting folks. That Some I, of them weren't vibrationally ready for what they were asking for. And you couldn't calibrate for them. They have to calibrate for themselves. Yeah. So that's what happened. <laughs> I've been very concerned with if I embark on a journey I shouldn't have. Oh, never. You gain clarity. And, you know, sometimes as we visit with you the way we do, people accuse us, and they're right, that we teach selfishness, and we do. Because you can only perceive or attract through the perspective of self. But what we are encouraging you to do is to calibrate and merge with the perspective of your inner being of you. That powerful, clear-minded, stable, loving being that you are. And as you calibrate to that kind of power, then your sphere of influence is great. Esther had such an interesting conversation in her ride from the airport to here yesterday. A beautiful man from India, been here for a little while, and he had a lot he wanted to talk about, and Esther really wanted to hear it. She found him entertaining and wise. You're going to like this story. Oh, yeah. I'm already loving it. <laughs> They're going to like it, too, but not for the reason they think. <laughs> and he was wanting to talk about his prosperity, and it was evident. He had it going on. He had a beautiful car, a nice job. It's a high-end limousine service. Esther likes it. They usually use it if it's available. So there they were, and he was talking about a bit about where it would come from. And Esther really didn't want to hear so much about where it would come from as much as she wanted to hear about where it was going. But a lot of people get confused about talking about where they're going because they're so interested in talking about where they've come from. And so there was a little bit of that going on. But then he said, yeah, I took someone to a Taylor Swift concert the other night. And Esther knew something about that because her daughter and granddaughter had just gone in another city and they loved, 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 loved how they felt while they were there, 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 there. It was lovely. So Esther was in resonance with that. And then he said, and he was the person who had purchased the most expensive ticket. That was his sort of claim to fame. I bought the most expensive ticket for the concert. And the driver said to Esther, it was $92,000. <laughs> what, you don't have an extra $92,000? <laughs> and so that was his response to, that was his response to, that seems extreme. And then he went on and it was clear in his, the words that came next, that he was standing in strong disapproval of this man and his action. And that was making Esther feel really uncomfortable because she's never bought a $92,000 Taylor Swift ticket, but she's bought a lot of things that he wouldn't like either. <laughs> she thought, I'm just gonna clam up. I'm not gonna tell him what I drive <laughs> or what I've driven or the rug I bought or uh, <laughs> stuff like that. So, so she just listened and he went on in a very strong way. And then he said, so I said to the man, sir, do you mind if I speak frankly with you? And the man said, no, speak frankly with me. And he said, you could do a lot of good with that money. Like there's people that don't have food to eat and there's people that don't have a place to sleep. And there's a shelter that I work at that could use all of that. And he was very persuasive in his disapproval of the way this man had spent his money. And then he said, and so the man said, well, take me to the venue. And the story he told was he cashed his ticket in. Guess he sold it to another sucker. <laughs> and then he took the money and he said, drive me to a shelter. Now see, see how you are. Yes. See how you are. 
you believe in shortage consciousness too don't you a little bit took it to the shelter so Esther's thinking maybe this is true and maybe it isn't it's not adding up usually people that can spend ninety two thousand dollars on a ticket are also very philanthropic and maybe it did really happen but the point that Esther was feeling and the point that we really want to make is you got to let go of that feeling that people are doing wrong things because they're doing different things than you would choose because you don't know their story you don't know where they stand you don't know what their point of attraction is and you can get so wadded up in your belief that you get to choose that you can use your life experience as your reason for pushing against so many others we know you're thinking well hopefully people will be reasonable and we say you know who gets to define what is reasonable that vibrational variance between your desire and you you've been given infinite clarity and the keys to the kingdom relative to all things and as you take some sort of solace or pride in depriving yourself of what you've been given and it's displayed to you in the discomfort you feel in others who are thriving you can't thrive you can't thrive when you push against those who are you can't be slender when you hate skinny girls <laughs> you want to find a way to be a vibrational match and it's not something that you do all at once it's something that you do moment by moment by moment by moment by moment by moment by moment Esther said to this guy I really like the wisdom that I hear from you but I just want to tell you a really quick story she said I have a hundred like this she said one time there was a man in one of our seminars and he was confessing got in the hot seat and kind of confessed I make closets for rich people and the crowd didn't groan but he felt so guilty and he said do you know some of these closets cost a hundred thousand dollars some people in the crowd groaned mostly men but the women And then he went on to explain how there's so many people that need money in so many ways and why are people spending money that kind of frivolously and we let him go on for a little while and then we said so we want to be clear is this your employment yes so you're benefiting by this yes we said do you magically manufacture all of the components of this closet no where do you get them from people who build them do they just give them to you or do they receive benefit from it in other words we went through the process of how many people are benefiting how much enterprise how much well-being how much law of attraction is happening how much thriving promotes thriving promotes thriving promotes thriving promotes thriving promotes thriving promotes thriving and when you get crossways of that and you start believing that deprivation is the way then sometimes your life experience has to show you that your life isn't getting better and that's the only way you know how you're doing when you say am I on the right path we say joy is the factor of success it is it's the factor of success when you feel good then you know that and we are not encouraging you to do something or to not do something we are not here we have not divvied up all of human behavior and decided that this is the good stuff and this is the bad stuff we've left that to your religions <laughs> and they're doing a terrible job as they use this and that and this and that as their excuse to kill each other really really they deserve to die because they think differently than you do so we're just saying <laughs> let your calibration be to your source most people calibrate to other humans your parents sort of taught it to you when you first come into this 
experience. When someone is holding you as their object of attention and they're adoring you, that feels really good. And you kind of like to keep that up. So you become pleasers, you do. And you move away from displeasing until you realize that the more you please, the more they ask, and the more they ask, the more you please, and the more you please, the more they ask, and the more they ask, the more you please, until pretty soon, sometimes you're pretty far apart from having any fun. That's why I've gone through a divorce. <laughs> or doing what you want to do. But as you calibrate not to others, which never works out well, and instead you're calibrating to your source, your source who knows what you want, knows what the person you're divorcing wants, knows what you're asking for, knows everything that you put into the vortex, knows who you've become because of the experiences that you've had, and knows that everyone can receive what they want, that no one is deprived when someone else receives, because the receiving isn't coming from a finite pie, it's coming from an infinite pie that is growing in perfect proportion to the asking that is offered. When you get the hang of this and you decide to let yourself thrive and you applaud everyone else who's thriving in whatever way they choose. Some people feel like they're thriving because they live simpler lives. Some people feel like they're thriving because they stay home with their kids. Sometimes people feel like thriving for all kinds of different reasons. You don't get to be anyone else's point of attraction. You just get to be your own point of attraction. But as you be your own point of attraction and you pay attention to the way you feel, you start to notice a pattern that every single time you pick out someone and you push against them, you don't feel good. You don't feel good. And you know why? Because your inner being didn't join you in that fight. Mm. So we're just saying. Thank you so much. Yeah. Gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video.